I guess pictures up. Pictures up. Pictures up. Let's roll sound. Rolling. Rolling. Sound speed. Camera speed. Awesome. Thank you. Mark. Hello. And action. Well, PJ, again, uh, I want to thank you for your time, and uh, it's an honor to be chatting with you today. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And uh, I'll head right into it. Um, looking to your filmography and the stories that you're drawn to, I know that the subject matter you often explore um, deals with issues that are sensitive but very necessary to examine. Uh, and I imagine that there is some catharsis to be found in this process as well for you as a filmmaker. Um, so how does that catharsis manifest for you? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, you know, all the films that I make are, are deeply personal in, in some way, whether it's obvious to the viewer or not. There's a real reason why, you know, I'm I'm interested in, um, you know, telling this story or following this subject. Um and specifically with who we become, um, I think there's some elements there that are probably pretty obvious. I'm Filipino American. You know, I grew up in the United States. My parents are from the Philippines. Um, and similar to the protagonist, you know, I'm a, I'm a child of immigrants. And, and part of that experience has been navigating uh, the kind of space of maybe knowing that my Parents and family have come from elsewhere and probably have had a very different experience than what I have as someone who very much identifies growing up as an American, right? And I think um, in the United States, I think a lot about these ideas of um, American individualism, you know, the idea of the American dream, right? Um, exceptionalism. Um, and sometimes when I do think... Um, of the Philippines, I think more in these terms of like community, right? This idea of the neighbor, the idea of like anyone who's of a certain age, you might call auntie or uncle, even though they're not really um, biologically related to you, but this idea of like family, right? And how that kind of extends. Um, and I think for me, um, as someone who's specifically Filipino American, um, I, similar to uh, the three protagonists, um, Lauren, Monica, and Jenna, we all kind of straddle that, right, in our families. Like, we understand um, what it's like to grow up here, but at some point, we also have to recognize um, maybe things that frustrated us about specifically our parents, maybe in our generation, and maybe us thinking like, well, they just don't understand us, or they, you know, this inflexibility there of like, why do they have to be this way? I think at some point when you get older, and you become an adult, you are forced to also think about your family members also as adults, <laughs> and think about the choices that they've made, right, and think about what they've experienced. And so for me, that kind of cathartic moment in the making of the film is seeing people who I have always, you know, thought of in, in one specific way as like, oh, parental figures, it's older generation, you know, whatever, inflexible, not understanding me, um, almost maybe turning it on myself a little bit and saying, wait a second, these are people too. They've had their own experiences. They are reacting to the same times that I'm living through and they're maybe reacting in different ways. Right. Um, and so as much as I want to um, speak to them and communicate to them, it's also a lot about listening and understanding where they're coming from. And and so for me, what's been amazing about seeing the, you know, making this film is that I think all three of um, these uh, protagonists do that really beautifully, maybe in a way that I don't even know if I could do to be quite honest i don't know if i have the temperament <laughs> have some of the conversations that they're having but there's a certain like um bravery and there's a certain amount of trust to have these conversations and there's a certain amount of love right that kind of has to happen in order to kind of get there and so so for me the cathartic moment is also i'm, I'm going to learn from this younger than me generation you know and see what they're doing and try to incorporate that into my own life and when you're working with three different stories from three different women in this film that are all thematically intertwined, um, for, 
from your perspective as as the director, can you share a bit about so collaborating with your editor and finding effective ways to fit those narrative and thematic pieces together? Yeah, the film was edited also by an amazing um, young Filipino American woman named Katrina Devera, who um, you know really stepped up uh, with this with this project because it really was a um, you know I came to her really with just a blueprint and I said okay you know I'm really interested in this idea of you know following these three individuals and some of the conversations they're going to have living through their lives you know thinking about the everyday storytelling that's already happening in their in their lives and let's put it together <laughs> you know um and it really was a collaborative process because as you can imagine like you know I'm having footage come in that is uh, self-documented by each of the protagonists but then um at some point I I also recognize you know it's really important to think about the kind of everyday storytelling that they're also engaging in on and specifically this younger than me generation that's very active on social media using, you know, using things like Instagram or Twitter or slash X, right? Um, TikTok even, right? To kind of express their thoughts to the world and kind of show some of their values that they hold. Um, and then also thinking just about the media itself, right? And how these time markers um, are really kind of showing the the situation and the you know environment and conditions that we're all kind of living under at that moment. So um, it really was. I don't always think of films that I'm making in the in in. Um, there's always an element of writing that I would say, but I would say a film like this um, very much. So I think about this concept of writing and how do we write this narrative that kind of um, interweaves all these different stories into one. Um, and Katrina did an amazing job. And as you can imagine, it wasn't an overnight process, right? It was, you know, editing different parts, watching it, thinking about different elements to add. Um, and then hopefully it just kind of all comes together at the end. And uh, in addition to directing, uh, I know you also have an extensive background in cinematography. Uh, so are there any way that you see that the DNA from your experiences as a director of photography uh, inform your decisions as as a filmmaker and in you know, directing a documentary like this one or um, Call Her Ganda or Before You Know It? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think when I first started, um, you know, uh, directing these feature documentaries, I filmed them myself. You know, like the very first documentary I released uh, Trinidad I was also the cinematographer and, and you know and occasionally I still will I made a short film a couple years back in 2019 called come and take it where I was you know primarily the DP but I prime I also as um, someone who is an experienced cinematographer I love working with DPs and cinematographers because I understand how important it is um, of that role and um, that collaborative nature Right. And I love just uh, filmmaking in general because it is a collaborative film. I mean, it's a collaborative uh, art form, at least for me, in the way that I'm making it. Um, so with this project, I was kind of excited to not work with a traditional cinematographer and really just work with, um, you know, our leads here and and ask them to kind of film their experience. And and for me. I think as someone who has been behind the camera, I know it also changes according, you know, things can change according to who's behind the camera. So I thought here, this would be uh, an amazing opportunity to also see um, maybe a certain level of intimacy and trust there that of course, as documentarians, as camera people, as cinematographers, we have to work and earn uh, you know, our, our way there, but what would it be like to start already with some relationship there where the person behind the camera already knows, you know, deeply the person in front of the camera and there's already this trust, like, where do you go from there, right? Um, and and also removing the idea of these huge cameras and 
things that seem foreign and replacing it with these things that are very everyday. Like, do I think all of these parents have seen their children filming themselves on their cell phones or something? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, like it probably happens more often than we even know, right? Um, as it often does, right? Like I was at the grocery store yesterday. I was laughing because I was watching someone taking a selfie, right? And it's just like, it's just in the everyday life, just taking a selfie at the grocery store, right? Like why that's important? I don't know, but it's important to someone. I'm sure there's a story there, right? Um, and so I think uh, it, you know, so that also offered a different um, type of collaborative filmmaking, but also a different level of maybe acts, you know, trust and um, intimacy, which I thought could be really fun. And um, so for me, it's also, making the project has been a really great experience because it it's forced me to also think of filmmaking in a different way, right? And that's always exciting to think about um, evolving as a filmmaker and recognizing filmmaking in many different kinds of ways of filmmaking. Uh, for, it was a filmmaker and you moved from 2020, you're still dealing with the effects of that year on every level of society and we continue to see that reflected in art and in the filmmaking we see. Um, so th are there any specific ways that the impact of 2020 has affected your voice as a storyteller? Yes, I think, um, you know, I, you know, I've always thought about what's, um, it's so challenging and difficult to make a film, like just hands down, right? Like, I mean, for anyone who has made a film, we all know, even if there's a film that you don't like, you should pay your respects because it was just hard enough <laughs> to, to do that. Whether or not you even like it, doesn't even matter, right? It's it's an accomplishment already, right? To just, to just make something. Um, and then of course, there's a layer on top of that of like, you know, what's important. You know, um, what's important enough that you're willing to kind of go through this real, like, challenging and sometimes harrowing kind of, you know, experience. Um, I think for me, since 2020, what um, I've really thought about is when um, things were shutting down, you know, and people are, frankly, afraid to to go outside, right? And they're just trying to survive right at that moment and trying to just wrap their heads around everything. Um, for me, what I realized is my way of also doing that was making a film, right? Like was this idea of like, well, I'm not going to, uh, you know, like, yes, I recognize everything's shutting down everything, but for me, it just ramped up my inspiration and drive to, to make something. And I think it made me realize what filmmaking also does for me in my kind of everyday life, it helps me make sense of things, right? It gives me a framework to literally look at the world of what is happening in front of me and try to make sense of it into a film, right? Um, it actually reminds me a lot of like the first time, um, you know, I picked up a camera and looked through it, you know? Um, I am a mid-career filmmaker, right? So I have made films prior to cell phones and things like that. So there was a time period where it was not everyone had that kind of experience of picking up a camera and capturing something. It wasn't as easy as it, as it is now in terms of just lifting up a cell phone and hitting record. And there was something very special about that. And I do remember that moment where I first looked through a camera and felt like, wow, here's an opportunity to do something or to reframe the way that I look at the world through this device and a way to capture it and represent it. And I think that's also what 2020 did for me, right? It was made me think about like, what can you do with films? Um, how are we making films? Um, and as we were, you know, speaking about earlier, it's just hard enough to make a film. There's a certain resiliency that you have to have in order to be a filmmaker. Um, and I don't, you know, I'm not just saying this to pat myself on the back, but I'm patting everyone on the back who made anything during this time period, because it really involved a lot of um, innovation and just kind of like, you know, willingness to try something. Um, and so it's nice to know that I can also evolve as a filmmaker in a different way. Yeah, it's interesting that you speak about that, uh, because I had somewhat of a similar experience in 2020 on a much smaller scale. Um, 
few of my friends, uh, we ended up making a feature length doc. Uh, it was about an hour long um, and it was, um, you know, basically no budget, but it was just something that kind of spawned out of having, having this creative energy that we wanted to, you know, put towards something and um, just having all that time to just sit with that creative energy. And we realized we had to do something with it. Um, so I, yeah, I think I identify with a lot of what you just said, um, you know, of course on a much smaller scale, but most definitely. Yeah. Well, PJ, again, I do want to thank you for your time today and everything you shared about uh, who we've become. And um, hopefully uh, we get a chance to speak more in the future about whatever else you have uh, coming down the line. And uh, just thank you again for everything you shared. Thank you. I appreciate it.